Hello, welcome to this very first video about one of the modal verbs that we use a lot and that is may, may. Now the word may, obviously it has several meanings in the English language. It's the name of a season. It can be a girl's name, but obviously what we're going to talk about today is using it as a modal verb. And whenever we talk about the word may, um, automatically a lot of us think about may and might and we always try to differentiate and see the difference between these two. May suggests that there is a higher probability about what I'm saying. So the likelihood of what I'm about to say is much higher compared to might. It's not a hundred percent uh, but it's very probable, very likely. That's the idea that we use for may. Now, may can be used in different functions. It's not just talking about probability. You're going to see uh, the different functions in this lesson. One little point that I'd like to add before we start. When you come across the examples that you see in this lesson, please do take the examples on board. I've used the word may in very, very popular, very widely used sentences in English, but do try to make your own sentences as well. Do try to use the word may using that function that you can see on the slide, but make it more relevant to you, your lifestyle, your day at work, your day as a student or everyday life or anything. Don't just take my sentences uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Try and make it more relevant to you as well. Right, let's get cracking. Okay, we're on the first slide here and we're going to use may here to say what I'm about to say is true, but I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, so it's true, but I'm not certain. There is a high probability. It's very likely uh, what I'm going to say, but when you add the modal may, it means you're just telling that person it's not a hundred percent. It's very highly likely, but not a hundred percent. So I'm not promising anything. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but it's very likely. Okay, let's use it in a few examples. Uh, you might have a friend who is on universal credit. Universal credit is a type of benefit that we get from the government. Um, it could include uh, any kind of support if you're looking for work. It could include different types of benefit. We call it universal credit. And it's universal because it includes different types of benefit. Now, you know that your friend is in receipt of benefit. Your friend is in receipt of benefits. That means they are receiving benefits. You want to tell your friend, given that you're on universal credit, you may be entitled to free bus fare. Yeah, it's worth inquiring. So you obviously, you're not making the law, are you? You don't know 100%, but you might have heard from here and there. You might have read somewhere. You might have been in this position yourself before. And you just want to pass on this friendly bit of information, advice, just to be helpful. And you tell your friend, because, given that, because, given that you're on universal credit, you may be entitled to free bus fare you know, free buses, free, free bus travel. Um, it's worth inquiring. It's not going to hurt, basically. Now, you don't know 100%, but it's more than just a guess. You have a very good feeling that it's quite likely this person might also be able to get free bus fare. And you're suggesting, you know, it's worth inquiring, definitely. So pick up that phone, dial that number and have a chat with the person who would know more than me it's highly likely that you might be entitled to free bus fare, which will help a lot, right? Who's going to say no to free bus fare? Uh, it could help you to get to work, get to college, whatever it is that you need. So it's not a bad idea. But we use the modal verb may here just to say, look, it's not guaranteed what I'm saying, but there is a high probability that you may be entitled to this little bit of money, which is good. OK, another example. It may be God's judgment that you didn't get the job. Ooh, someone who's just been rejected. Ooh, that, that hurts, right? 
<laughs> that's really painful if you've just been rejected at a, at a, a job interview. So if someone's been rejected, they already feel very low. They already feel very down. Some people say they feel a bit like a loser uh, and it really affects your confidence. It hits you where it hurts, right? Really hits you where it hurts. So we um, culturally, we want to try and make that person feel less of a loser, feel less of a failure. This is a sentence that we use a lot, right? It may be God's judgment that you didn't get the job. Something better might be on the horizon. You don't know. We don't know what the plan is. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's in store for you uh, for the future. So it may be God's judgment that you didn't get the job because something better might be coming along later. We use this sentence a lot just to make that person not feel as bad as they already do. So it may be God's judgment that you didn't get the car. It may be God's judgment that, for example, you're not pregnant or whatever it is that you want to say to your friend. Anytime you feel that your friend, your partner, anybody is going for something, they've really put their all into it, but they don't get it. They feel really let down. They feel really down and, and really upset. This is a lovely way of trying to just sound a little bit more um, uh, sympathetic, if you like. Uh, the next one, it may well rain later. Stick a brolly in your bag or the boot of the car just in case. Okay. It may well rain later. So I don't just have it may rain later. If you want to add a little bit more stress to your sentence with the word may, we add well. It may well rain later. I'm looking outside. I can see very, very angry, dark clouds. The evidence suggests that it's very, very, very likely that it's going to rain. I can't guarantee for a hundred percent. It's British weather, right? <laughs> it has a mind of its own, but uh, I have a very strong feeling that it may well rain later. It's very, very highly likely stick a brolly in your bag so here stick is a verb and it just means put put very quickly very similar to pop you know how we say pop this in your bag yeah stick is basically the same kind of thing uh, so it's an idiom and it means just stick a brolly in your bag brolly is umbrella just put an umbrella in your bag it's not going to take a lot of time doesn't take any energy so stick a brolly in your bag or the boot of the car just in case um it's not hurting anyone it's not taking up space and it might really come in handy later yeah so stick a brolly in your bag or the boot of the car just in case so the word brolly that i'm using here the word brolly is slang for the word umbrella <clears throat> Uh, so if you hear people talking about the word brolly that we do a lot, it just means umbrella. So in this slide, what we've done in all these sentences, I have quite a quite a strong feeling about what I'm saying, but I'm not 100% sure. There's no guarantee. That's why I use the, uh, the modal verb may in all of these sentences. Okay. Let's move to the next slide. Now, in this slide... Um, what's happening is you're going to accept what somebody has just said to you, but you're going to contrast with something more important. So now we're using the word may to have a completely different meaning. So I'm going to accept what you've just said, but I'm going to add something which I think is more important to what you've just said, right? Let's take a look at an example. Number one, I may not be as experienced as you, but that doesn't give you the right to treat me like that. Ooh, right. So we're getting down and dirty with this one, aren't we? <laughs> the gloves are coming off. The gloves are coming off. That's an idiom, which means I'm ready to fight. The gloves are coming off. Gloves meaning the boxing gloves. And people who get really angry, they do not play by the rules anymore 
the gloves are coming off. That means I don't care about rules. I'm ready to start a fight. That's how angry I am. It's it's an idiom that we use. So I, I um, might be in a situation where, for example, I'm in a work situation. I'm talking to my colleague or sometimes even a supervisor. And I understand that my supervisor, my colleague, anybody is more exp more experienced than I am. But um, what I'm trying to say in this sentence is just because you're more experienced doesn't give you the right to treat me like this, to talk to me like this. Just because you're more experienced, you don't have the right to talk to me like this, to look down on me, to raise your voice at me, to patronize me. You don't have the right to do that. OK, so I'm saying I accept. I understand that you're more experienced than I am. That's the part where I accept your your part of speech but i contrast it with something i think is more important and that's the way that you're behaving towards me yeah i take on board the fact that you have more experience than me but that doesn't give you the right to treat me like that not at all and that whole part of the treat me the behavior that side of it is what's important to me right now in this situation i may not be as experienced as you but that doesn't give you the right to treat me like that okay um, you could take exactly this same sentence and you could use it in another situation <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's say, for example, you are in a shop, you're in a restaurant, you're in a hotel, you're somewhere where you're the customer and you don't know the rules very well. And somebody is looking down on you, patronizing you and talking to you in a very bad manner. And you want to say, I may not know the rules as much as you, so I may not be familiar with the rules of this place but that doesn't give you the right to treat me like that so this sentence can be used in lots of different situations it's not just for a work setting and it's a very good one to have up your sleeve uh, a few of these sentences are very good just to have up your sleeve you want to stand up for yourself right in certain situations okay number two <clears throat> be it as it may so this is an idiom be it as it may, we have to get our hands dirty no matter what, right? Uh, usually when you're in a team, you're working as a group, um, <laughs> some people might be reluctant to try something new. Some people might think, you know, is it worth doing that? Or, oh, we're not going to listen to your suggestion anymore. We know that's not going to work. Or, no, that's too difficult. We don't want to do that. So there are obviously differences that are uh, lots of clashes in a team, in a group. Yes. So be it as it may, that means I understand what the situation is. Be it as it may, I understand what the situation is. We have to get our hands dirty no matter what. To get your hands dirty is an idiom, which means we have to try really hard. We still have to try really hard. We have to do whatever is in our power whatever it takes, no matter what. OK, so I understand you guys might be tired, but we still have to try our best. I understand we've tried 15 different times, but we can't give up. We still need to try a 16th time. Yeah. So be it as it may, whatever you guys are saying, I understand, I accept, but we can't give up. We can't stop. We have to get our hands dirty. We have to still keep trying no matter what, no matter what. So this is where I'm accepting what people are saying, but I'm contrasting it with something I think is more important. We can't give up in this second sentence. We have to keep on going. Number three, <clears throat> the tablets may make you feel nauseous at first, but give it time to kick in. OK, so this obviously is a sentence that's usually coming from a doctor or a chemist or somebody with a knowledge uh, of medicine. The tablets may make you feel nauseous at first. Nauseous, nauseous. Uh, so I am the doctor. I'm not 100 percent how I don't know 100 percent how the tablets are going to make you feel because everybody's different. The tablets may make you feel nauseous at first, but give it time 
to kick in. To kick in, it means to start, to make an effect, to start affecting you, yeah? So the tablets may make you feel nauseous at first, but give it time to kick in. Once that nausea, nausea, once that nausea has passed, then you'll see the tablets will start working. Okay, so again, this is where we accept what that person has said. In the third one, for example, the patient might be a bit concerned. I've had these tablets before or I've, ha I've had something similar before and it hasn't helped. And you can say the tablets may make you feel nauseous at first, but give it time. Don't rush it. Don't jump to conclusions. Jump to conclusions. That's an idiom. Give it time to kick in. Okay, so in this slide, you can see you've accepted what that person has said, but you come back with something you think is more important. Okay, let's go to the third slide now with May, and here we are giving or asking for permission. Um, and this is going to be again in a work setting. Uh, we, we're just either asking for permission to say something, to get involved, or we're giving permission maybe for something to happen. Okay, number one, if I may interject, interject, if I may interject, we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Why not simplify matters? So this first one, although it is meant here in a work situation, you could even use it at home with family, with friends. So if I may interject, that means if it's okay for me to jump in, you guys are talking, yeah, you're discussing, you're arguing. Can I say something? If I may interject, that means can I say something? Can I come and join you in this discussion? Yeah. If I may interject, interject we're making a mountain out of a molehill look guys the problem is small we're making it really big the problem is very small we're making a mountain out of a molehill a molehill is something very small very insignificant it's a small problem we're making it really big we are the ones who are making it into a huge thing. Why not simplify matters? Simplify is the verb, which means to make it simple. So if I may interject, we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Why not simplify matters? Two of your friends are disagreeing over the simplest of things. Whose turn is it to pay? <laughs> something very very simple or the simplest of things at work as well and you're seeing that you're not getting very far and you want to get in on that conversation that discussion that argument and you want to tell people guys this is simple why are we turning it into something so big let's make it simple let's simplify it yeah okay so if i may interject this is where i am asking for permission to involve myself in this argument in this discussion number two if i may suggest this discussion isn't getting us anywhere shall we take five minutes so again this is meant to be used in a work situation but we could even use it with friends in a home setting anywhere if I may suggest, so I'm asking for permission before I just make my suggestion, I'm asking for permission. It just makes the situation a little bit more formal and a bit more polite if I ask for permission before I start suggesting. So if I may suggest, this discussion isn't getting us anywhere. We're not solving the problem. I can't see a result in sight. We're just talking and talking and talking and we're not really getting anywhere, yeah? Shall we take five minutes? Let's just take a five minute break. Shall we take five minutes? Let's just go cool off, go get a cup of tea, go get some fresh air maybe, just go sit down and close our eyes. <laughs> just take a breath, yeah? Shall we take five minutes? Because right now we're talking, we're not getting anywhere. I can't see any results. If I may suggest, this discussion isn't getting us anywhere. Shall we take five minutes? This is something that you could use with your partner. You could use in your own family, with your own friends, as well as in a work setting. Yeah. Okay. Number three, may I leave earlier today for a personal matter? So this is where we're asking for permission. Again, may I leave earlier today? 
for a personal matter. And this happens to all of us, doesn't it? You're at work, you suddenly either get that phone call that your kid's not doing well, you need to go pick them up, or you've got an important appointment that you have to get to. You might have, oh, you might have been so unlucky that you're on the waiting list on the NHS. You've been waiting for this appointment for donkey's years. <laughs> for ages and you have to get to that appointment this is a personal matter so may i leave earlier today for a personal matter yeah uh, in all of these you can see we're using the the modal verb may either to ask for permission or to give permission okay Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Here, with the modal verb may, we're touching on someone's reaction to something we're about to say. So, I haven't said it yet, but I am thinking about that person's reaction when I say it. So, I haven't said my sentence yet, but I have a feeling about how they're going to react because I know that person the person I'm talking to. It could be family, friends, it could be relatives, it could be work colleagues. I know what kind of reaction I'm going to get. I have a good feeling of what kind of reaction I'm going to get. So I, I try and address that while I'm saying the thing that I'm saying. Let's take a look. Number one, you may find it hard to believe, but I passed my road test on the first go. Hmm, check me out, right? <laughs> so I'm really happy with myself. Obviously, I'm very proud. I'm talking to somebody who uh, might think that I'm not that clever. I'm talking to somebody who might think they are better than everybody else, that they are the only ones who pass a test the first time, or that's the kind of reaction I'm expecting from that person. So this is what I'm saying. You may find it hard to believe. I know it's difficult for you to believe this, but guess what? I passed my road test on the first go. Road test, of course, is the driving test, not the theory, the part that you do on the road. We call it road test on the first go, the first time I took this test. So you may find it hard to believe because you don't believe in me, because you think you're better than everybody else or because of whatever reaction. But I passed my road test on the first go. Hmm. Okay. Number two, you may consider this point trivial trivial, trivial, but presentation is everything. You may consider this point trivial, but presentation is everything. Now, I've got a lovely presentation board here suggesting that uh, this sentence is used in a work setting, but we can definitely use it at home as well or with friends and family, especially with family. So if I'm at home and, for example, I'm trying to organise something, maybe a party, I'm trying to assemble something, for example, and it's not working, it's not looking the way I want it to look, it still looks a bit wonky, it doesn't look professional, it doesn't look tidy, organised, it doesn't look nice, it doesn't look chic. For whatever reason and the person I'm talking to keeps saying oh my god Leila it's fine oh you're being so sensitive it's fine leave it and I'm gonna say you may consider this point trivial you might think it's not very important trivial very small you might think this is a small thing but presentation is everything the way it looks is very important because people are going to look at this and they're going to have their first impression. They're going to make their own judgment. It's important that if pe people see my work, that they know I've really tried hard. I don't want the end result to be something messy, something untidy, something that doesn't look like quality. I want it to scream quality. I want it to scream professional. Yeah, so it might be a small thing for you, but for me, presentation, how it looks is everything. And that's why we're using may. I'm saying this because I know the reaction of that person I'm talking to. I know that person is so laid back. Oh my God, Layla, let it go. You're, you're getting too picky and you're too sensitive and 
So I know the reaction of that person and that's why I use the modal verb may. You may consider this point trivial, but presentation is everything. We can use it in our own personal lives, but as you can see, we can also use it at work. If we're working in a team, we want the end result to be good, really good quality before we go back and show it to the supervisor or the client. Number three, we may not see results first time round, so we'll have to work around the problem. We may not see results first time round, so we're going to try this, we're going to brainstorm, we're going to try, and I already have a feeling the person I'm talking to is going to get dissuaded, dissuaded. I already have a feeling the person I'm talking to is going to get dissuaded and is going to feel rejected very quickly. They're going to give up very quickly. So you might not see results the first time we do this. So we'll have to work around the problem. We can't give up. That's what I'm trying to say. I have a feeling the person I'm talking to, because I know them, I have a feeling that that person's going to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to give up. This is too hard. Because of that, I'm going to tell them beforehand, before you give up, before you throw in the towel, that's an idiom, throw in the towel, that means give up. Before you throw in the towel, I'm going to tell you, we're not going to give up. We'll have to work around the problem. We might not be able to exactly solve the problem itself, but we can try by um, helping anything else on the side to make that problem seem smaller, maybe. So basically, I'm saying we're not going to give up. And I'm saying this now before we start working on it, because I know your reaction. Okay, so we use the modal verb may to suggest I know you very well. I know your reaction. That's why I'm using may just to tell you, even though this is going to be your reaction, still, we're going to do this. Yeah, so it's a lovely way to uh, prepare somebody for what you're about to say, because you know them and you know how they're going to react. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Now, in this one, we use may for making a wish or saying a prayer. This is one of those great places or great uh, functions of the word may. If you uh, attend a funeral, if you attend a wedding, if you attend some kind of celebration or you want to uh, wish somebody something, you want to pray for somebody we use the modal verb may in these situations as well. May the good times last forever or may the good times roll. We use this as well. May the good times roll. May the good times last forever. So this is a se uh, sentence we say. <clears throat> we can say it to anybody really. That means uh, you're having a good time right now. You're going through a good phase of your life. You're in a good place. So I hope this feeling of joy, happiness, I hope it lasts forever and it's not temporary. It's lovely, isn't it? The sentence is a really nice sentence to say, may the good times last forever. So I can see that you're happy in your life and I'm just praying uh, that I hope this feeling that you have, this this joy, this happiness, this sense of achievement that you have right now, I really hope that this lasts forever, yeah? Or may the good times roll, may the good times roll, and that's the idiom. It's a lovely thing to say to somebody, okay? Another one, may the best man win or may the best woman win, and this is an idiom. So you're in a competition, okay? It's you versus somebody else. And we don't know that person is a man, that person is a woman, whatever. And we say, may the best man win or may the best woman win. That means I'm not just praying for myself and I'm not just praying for you. You're my competition. <laughs> I'm not praying for you. But I do hope the best person the person who is the strongest, the person who is worthy. I hope that person wins. And I don't know who it's going to be, you or me, I don't know. But whoever is the best person, I hope that person wins. Because 
they are worth it yeah so may the best man win or we use it for woman as well may the best woman win and this is when we have some kind of competition or uh, some kind of bet you might have a bet with a friend a colleague anybody may the best man win or may the best woman win it can be a bet or competition about anything uh, so that's what we say okay number three may the future bring ample joy and prosperity to you and your loved ones okay may the future bring ample joy and prosperity to you and your loved ones this is usually what we say at around new year usually that's that's when we say it or the beginning of something so may the future which means i hope that the future will bring you ample a lot of ample joy and prosperity improvement uh, a better quality of life to you and your loved ones your family the people that you love may the future bring ample joy and prosperity to you and your loved ones it's lovely to write if you're giving somebody a uh, christmas card a new year's card something like this it's lovely just to scribble this in scribble scribble just to scribble this in scribble uh, is a word it means just write it very quickly just to scribble this in it's lovely to put it in a card i hope that you and your loved ones have a fantastic future ahead of you in the new year basically is what it means okay and we've come to the very last slide of this uh, lesson well done for staying with me up to now okay in this one may is going to mean a suggestion to be helpful so i'm going to use may to try and offer advice to be helpful to somebody okay now we use might also to offer advice but i'm saying may because um, it's maybe based on my own experience. It might be based on my own knowledge. Something tells me that when I give you this suggestion or when I give you this advice, it's very, very probable that this advice or suggestion is going to help you because I've already experienced this situation or because I know about this. Okay, so we use may just to be helpful just when we want to make a suggestion maybe. Number one, you may want to phone ahead, yeah? They don't like it when you just turn up unannounced. This could be for if you're uh, hoping to go to a restaurant, if you're hoping to go to a hair salon, anywhere that you need to have booked beforehand because they can get really, really busy, uh, I'm telling you based on experience, yeah, you may want to phone ahead. Don't just turn up. They don't like it when you just turn up. Turn up, it means go when you suddenly appear, yeah? They don't like it when you just turn up unannounced. You may want to phone ahead. You may want to book ahead. You may want to give them a heads up. You may want to let them know beforehand. So in all of these, I'm using the modal may, may. Why am I using this? Because I've experienced it myself. If we use the modal verb might, it means I might not have experienced this. I'm just guessing. But when I use may, that means I've experienced this myself. I turned up myself unannounced once um, and they didn't like it. It didn't go down well. It didn't go down well. Go down, it means happen. It didn't happen very well. <laughs> the result was not very good. So based on my knowledge, based on my experience, I'm telling you, you may want to phone ahead. They don't like it when you just turn up unannounced. So this could be anywhere, even if you want to go and talk to somebody, you want to talk to the principal of your child's school, you want to go and have a word with somebody at the bank. If you want to go and, you know, attend a somewhere that's usually based on an appointment, I'm just saying because I've been in that situation or maybe I know that they're really, really busy, rushed off their feet, rushed off their feet they don't like it when you just turn up unannounced you may want to just give them a heads up or phone ahead number two you may want to wait you may want to wait 
it's worth it. Take it from someone who's been there. Okay, so you may want to wait. It's worth it. Take it from someone who's been there. You're about to do something and I might have prior knowledge or I might have experienced this myself. And I'm telling you, you may want to wait. I can't order you. No, 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 wait. I can't tell you what to do, can I? Because that's very rude. So I say you may want to wait. It's worth it. Waiting is worth it. Take it from someone who's been there. Take it. Accept what I'm saying from someone who's been in this situation before. Okay, so this could apply to anything. I mean, if you think about it, it could apply to absolutely anything. You want to go and buy a house. And I'm thinking, mm, this time of the year, it's not a good idea. The house prices are going up. So houses are, houses are more expensive. Yeah, so this is where I would say you might want to wait. It's worth it. Take it from someone who's been there. I've tried buying a house in this season. It's not a good idea. I've ended up paying 10, 20,000 pounds extra just because it's been the wrong season. For example, obviously this hasn't ha actually happened to me. You might want to go and loan a car, yeah? Uh, lease, sorry, you might want to lease a car. You might want to uh, apply for either a credit card, ap apply for a university uh, scholar, um, course. You wanna do something. You wanna start doing something big and I'm just saying, wait, I've been in this situation before and based on my experience or my knowledge, you may want to wait. Yeah, it's worth it. You're not going to be sorry, basically. And the last sentence of this lesson, you may want to apply the cream sparingly, sparingly to avoid a rash or allergic reactions. Right. So there's a kind of cream that you want to use. And it could be a medicinal cream, medicinal, medicinal, which is for medicine. It might be a medicinal cream or it might just be beauty cream. It doesn't matter. But based on experience, <laughs> I'm telling you, you may want to apply the cream sparingly, sparingly. That means don't lay it on thick. Don't use too much. Don't lay it on thick. Don't use too much. I'm saying you might want to apply the cream sparingly, just a little bit, just a little bit to avoid a rash or allergic reactions. Because guess what? I tried this cream before and I got an allergic reaction maybe, or I got a rash maybe, or my skin didn't take well to this cream. It didn't take well to the cream. It showed some kind of reaction. Based on my personal experience, I'm just trying to be helpful. I'm suggesting you may want to apply the cream sparingly, just a little bit, to avoid a rash or allergic reactions. Okay. So that's the end of the lesson. I hope you found this session interesting. As you can see, the word may can be used in so many different functions and situations. So I would highly recommend that for each of these functions, you sit and think about your own life, about your own uh, lifestyle. How can you use uh, this function of may in your own life, in your own life, for, for your own work, for your own friends and family, something to suit you, okay? And hopefully this will speed up um, your, your process of learning when and where to use the modal may. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.